Hello, Paloma Health family. Thank you so much for submitting all of your questions. Super excited to pop on here and give you some answers. So let's get this started. All right, so the first question that we got here is, how can we lower our inflammation? And the first thing I like to start with when we talk inflammation is diet. So the easy button is removing those pro-inflammatory foods um, like processed foods, fast foods, um, high sugar intake, you know, just eliminate all of that, right? It's producing a negative response. It's producing a chronic inflammatory response, but then incorporating whole foods, you know, from plants um, that naturally have an anti-inflammatory benefit to them. Um, I like to tell people, you know, eat the rainbow of a variety of nine to 12 servings a day, and that should help mitigate any inflammation. But you can also incorporate other um, anti-inflammatory um, foods, like green tea, like turmeric, like fish oil supplements, things like that, or just fish that's you know high in omega threes. Those are all anti-inflammatory, so that that can help mitigate the response. The next thing I want to emphasize is controlling stress. So um, you know when you're under a stressful situation, you have a rise in cortisol levels, which is your stress hormone. This leads to just a development of an increase in those pro-inflammatory cytokines within your immune system and puts you again in this inflammatory state. So you want to try to mitigate stress. I recommend things like yoga or um, you know meditation to try to do that. Exercise is another one. So there are studies that show that exercise and movement directly reduce those inflammatory cytokines. So getting in that exercise every single day, even if it's just 30 minutes of something that you enjoy is essential. Um, and lastly, I like to emphasize is sleep. So sleep deprivation is associated with um, you know, a, a, a more chronic inflammatory state. There's actually studies that have shown that for those that are sleep deprived, they actually have elevated levels of those inflammatory cytokines. So ensure you're getting eight to nine hours of sleep every single night, um, and that you know will help to reduce that overall inflammatory response. All right, so this next question here is about TPO antibodies and um, why doctors don't recommend it. Um, well, so t a lot of primary care physicians will say, well, if you have elevated TPO, then we know you have a diagnosis of Hashimoto's and we don't need to recheck it anymore. You're just gonna have this forever. Um, the argument there is that TPO antibodies are actually uh, can reflect the inflammatory state within your body. So if your TPO antibodies are elevated or they continuously are going up, then there is some type of underlying um, inflammation that's going on that you need to try to get to the root cause of. So typically, if you can reduce that inflammation and recheck antibodies, we should be able to see a reduction in our TPO antibodies. So what is bromine toxicity? Well. So first thing, if you think back to chemistry, bromine is in the same column on the periodic table as iodine. And we know that we need iodine to create thyroid hormones. So when you have increased levels of bromine, bromide, then you have a, um, you know, a competition that goes on between iodine and bromine. And so bromine usually will win. And therefore, you know, unfortunately, it doesn't actually produce thyroid hormone like iodine does. So what it's doing is it's blocking um, your body's ability to produce thyroid hormone. Um, bromines are found in hot tubs. Typically, that's what's used um, instead of chlorine. And, and some chlorine pools, they, you know, they do use bromine as well. Um, but also, it's found in like commercial flour, like cakes and doughs, um, cakes and cookies and things. They use it to actually soften the dough. They add in that, you know, to soften the dough. Also, in soda drinks like Mountain Dew and pesticides, there's bromine. So you know, you want to mitigate that. And obviously you just, you don't want to, um, you want to reduce exposures to it as much as possible because you don't want that bromine competing with iodine for thyroid hormone production. Okay, so this one is top supplements for Hashi's people. Um, my top three are gonna be iron, selenium, and vitamin D. So iron is a vital nutrient. It's essential um, for thyroid hormone production, for the conversion of T4 to T3, which is our active, and also for just uptake of that T3 by the cells. And so that is a vital hormone, and we'll get into another question later, um, a little bit more about that. Um, but selenium is another one. So selenium is responsible for that conversion of T4 to T3, and where we have low selenium levels, then 
you know, we may have normal T4 levels, but because we're not converting and our TSH looks good, our T4 looks good, but we still have symptoms, it's because we have low T3 levels and therefore that's the metabolically active hormone. So it's not able to, you know, work at the cell receptors the way it needs to. And therefore, as a result, you're feeling those symptoms develop. And then the last one is vitamin D. I mean, vitamin D is an immune modulator. Um, it helps to increase T regulatory cells. Um, and so if you have Hashimoto's, we wanna balance our T cell response. Um, and so, I mean, vitamin D is essential for everything, but that's a, that's a big one that we always want to have elevated. Um, studies have actually shown that increased vitamin D levels are inversely related to TPO. So you increase your vitamin D, you see a drop in your TPO antibodies. Um, and so we all know we want that. All right, so this is taking us back to iron, talking about ferritin. Um, ferritin is essentially a measure of the iron stored within the cells. And this is super important, right? Like, as we said, iron is necessary for thyroid hormone production, for conversion, um, as well as uptake of the thyroid hormone by the cells so that it can, can be metabolically active. Um, and so really, you, you need iron, you know, a, a, an optimal, elevated or normal um, ferritin levels really results in optimal thyroid hormone production. So um, checking ferritin levels, checking iron levels is essential. I can't tell you how many people are typically low. Um, and then when they can reverse that, they feel so much better for those reasons. All right, let's talk about reverse T3, um, kind of a controversial one. Um, when and why should you test it? So first, what is it? Um, so we know that T4 hormone converts to T3, which is our metabolically active thyroid hormone. Well, under situations of extreme stress, for instance, um, T4 will convert to this inactive form, reverse T3, um, and therefore it's, it's not metabolically active. And so when we talk about having, so you have somebody who has a normal TSH, a normal T4, and now they have a low T3. So the one thing we talked about is having a conversion issue, right? Maybe they have low selenium, maybe they have low iron. So let's say we've don't right? we've corrected all those nutrient deficiencies but still seeing um low reverse uh low t3 levels that person could have elevated reverse t3 right they may be you know super stressed and they're converting t4 to reverse t3 um and so as a result they're continuing to have symptoms because their t3 levels are so low so that could be a good time to check it to assess right to utilize that task to really get down to the root cause to understand why we're still having symptoms despite feeling like we're doing everything right. Okay, vitamin D again. Um, question is, does vitamin D help with thyroid? Vitamin D helps with everything. That's my response to that. Um, but we already touched on this, right? So vitamin D is immune modulator. It helps regulate, you know, increase our T regulatory cells, which help balance our, our Th1, Th2 helper cells in the body. Um, and so it's balancing that immune response that you're having with um, Hashimoto's. Um, and, and therefore, you know, you'll be able to better control disease and that inflammatory response. But in addition, as I mentioned, you know, as a result of controlling that inflammatory response, remember, you're going to see a reduction in those TPO antibodies because we know that that T elevated TPO is a reflection of an inflammatory state in the body. All right. So how do you do vitamin testing if your doctor won't order it? Um, I'm not gonna plug in any companies here, but you can look for some at-home testing similar to what Paloma offers for thyroid testing for nutrient deficiency. Additionally, if you're ordering lab tests through Paloma, um, you can work with a provider to um, you know, manage your thyroid and identify if there are additional nutrient tests that need to be ordered from outside labs through that provider. So that's another option as well. All right, so what supplements should you avoid? Um, and here I'm gonna focus on our Hashimoto's population. Um, obviously this is, you know, our autoimmune conditions are a reflection of a dysregulation of our immune system. And so we don't want to be taking herbs that are gonna stimulate the immune response, right? And stimulate the immune system. Things like elderberry, echinacea, mushrooms, um, astragalus, you know, things that a lot of people were taking this year um, you know, to boost their immune system. But when you boost your immune system and you have an autoimmune disease, you're boosting that attack 
on whatever organ is related to your autoimmune disease. So for Hashimoto's, you're gonna boost that inflammatory response on your thyroid by taking immune stimulating herbs. So you really wanna be careful with that. Um, the other thing is really anything that's gonna throw off hormones, um, any herbs that you're taking to increase or decrease estrogen, progesterone, I mean, you don't wanna do those things blindly. You really need to be testing. Our hormones all work together. Nothing works in silos. And so that's really key and important. And if you're increasing estrogen levels, I mean, you know, increased levels of estrogen or progesterone can, can impact hormone development, block the conversion of T4 to T3. So you really wanna be careful um, with um, herbs and supplements like that.